Jorgen Janikian in my defense. in these cases. It's good to see them again. Huh? The reason why is in there. Well, you, you think you could take these off, hmm? I mean, I called Sheriff to hotel after, and I waited half an hour. I'm a running, and he waited I'm too old. Police? There. Jorgen Janikian. American citizen and still proud of it. Armenian by birth, but American by invitation. Yeah, 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 really, really. I have lived a long time in many things. Been a professional engineer, retired. In Kavir, the Persian desert built a railroad for the Allies in World War II. Hottest desert in the world. Temperature 145. Yeah. You play with eggs. Uh, you put under cover in the sun, and after a couple of minutes, the eggs blow up like a bomb. <laughs> Churchill, Stalin, President Roosevelt, all meet in Tehran. Yaniki and there, too. Well, I mean, not, not with them, but there, there. Allies want more supplies to Russia. Only way by sea, Murmansk run. With German U-boats, dive bombers, oh, Allied ships sunk. So, in Tehran, the great men, they decided, join railways from Persian Gulf to Russia. But, there's a 35-mile gap between Tehran and Tabriz. There's mountains, difficult land. I built that railroad 35 miles. 65 bridges in 15 months. I was three months early, eh? I was nearly killed in the mountains, but 10 million tons of American supplies travel my railroad to help Russia be the Germans. Only allies know how many lives saved. In my briefcase, there, photo, first train, American supplies. Ah, what they send Yannickian, a yeah, crate of whiskey. I told you, hey, come on, yeah, Yannickian drinks vodka, not whiskey. Americans say, you will learn to drink whiskey. <laughs> so, so, so. Yannickian sent a special paper by the U.S. government. In white, come to America, be citizen. Ah, I was proud. My wife, I was uh, 1946. Armenian by birth, American citizen by invitation. Second class citizen, because for 36 years I tried to get last contract payment for railroad. I need money, not for me, no, 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 but for my life's work. A movie. I sue Shah of Persia in his courts for my money, his own courts. His court, his own court. I say, pay a Nikian what you owe, more than one million dollars. Shah refused. So, so back in America, I wrote State Department. Help me. For years, I admire America. I read books and the Constitution. Lincoln, Jefferson, Franklin, great men. Oh, great ideas, rights and justice. So, American citizen, Yanikian asked U.S. government, Stop it to Shah, just a little while. Till Shah pay Yanikian. I mean, that money, not for me, for movie. Telling the world. Telling young people, very important. 
about the massacres of one and a half million Armenians by Turks in 1915. Why? Why? And not just Armenians. Huh? I make deal with MGM for book, get scenario. I make film to show all over the world. Free, with money from Shah. It was my dream. My reason, my, my work. I have nobody. But my wife, she... I have no children. Turks massacre all my family. Twenty-six. And one point million in 1915. Now, when I make movie, I will tell the world why. The world knows nothing. It, listen, did you know before Yanikian told you? Huh? It's a good purpose. Well, after 36 years trying to get my money, a few months ago, I get last letter from State Department terminating their consideration of the matter. Terminating their consideration? They think what, I'm some Don Quixote, eh? Or something, fighting all the windmills? But the world knows that story. Oh, yeah, yeah. And now, after today at hotel, they will know Armenian story. State Department could not help by invitation, American citizen. Will not give American citizen his rights. Prefer foreigners to Americans. Ah, yes, politics. A Turkey, important NATO. Shah, important NATO. Important, important. What more important than the truth? You know, that official of State Department tell MGM not to make that movie. Why? Turkish government. So, no justice. No money, no movie, no truth. Nobody learns nothing. And nothing ever changes. And the world dies. Yanikian is American. I will die American. And I will submit to American justice. But I am Armenian first. I spend my life, my money, studying history of the massacre. I, I, I write millions of words to ask why, why. I wait, I wait, I wait. Maybe, maybe conscience of the mankind cannot act. Huh? League of Nations, United Nations, Court at Hague, do not act. I am against killing. In all my books, you read, you read, you read, all, all my writings, you can see that I am for the democratic way. No killing. No killing. President Wilson, you know, he told, he, he, he wrote, protect this small nation, Armenia. It's not a question of justice. It will prove mankind as a conscience. That's what he said. That's President Wilson said that. And you see, if the truth is told, so much good will come. So much blood prevented. I am a man of peace. I wanted to prevent more violence. Prevent killing. I am against killing. I am against it. But you didn't know, huh? Till I told you. That one and a half million, 80% of the people, my people of Armenia, were massacred as part of Turkish government policy in 1915? You didn't know till I told you, eh? No, no. Well, I mean, who knows? <laughs> who cares? Only a few people know about the Holocaust. Everyone knows about the Holocaust. But Hitler's solution for the Jewish problem, eh? Everybody knows about that. Organized massacres in concentration camps, gas ovens, ghettos, a massacre machine. Did you know? Did you know that early on, when Hitler was only planning to massacre the Jews, one of his staff suggested the world would not permit it to happen. Hitler's reply was, Who remembers the Armenians now? Who remembers the bloody Armenians? You see, the world did not learn. Because the world does not know. This was, this was genocide before the world was even invented. And the Turks got away with it. So Hitler thought he could get away with it. There were so many massacred. Could 
It, it can be a way to avoid it. It can be. Now, when the State Department refused to get my money, not for me, for the field, I had to think, I had to think hard. How? What I do now? How to make a noise in the world before I die? And what I did after thinking for days, what I did, you know. <laughs> could I could I have my briefcase, please, huh? It's my medicine, mate. I cannot take more high blood pressure. <laughs> if, uh, if I don't take the medicine, you know, maybe you will not finish your investigation. Please. My work, eh? is all my life. For three days before, I review my life, all my my conclusions. Now, this this is where I was born. Look, at the room in 1895. Uh, I'm an old man. <laughs> uh, right here, only one ear. My other ear is dead. <laughs> 25 years. So sometimes, you know, if I ask, at the room, they call me. Chart Isavak, Child of Massacre. The nickname. See, I had no, no Christian name because I was born in the midst of a massacre. There's no church. Etzerum no longer existed. Nothing. Everyone gone. I was five, six months old. My family flee to Kars. In only way, they lost me. Well, so my mother told me. In the mountains, in the snow, from the sled. And nobody wanted to go back to find me. Everybody scared of being killed. But my mother said, I am going back to find my baby. And Hagop said, I am coming with you. Hagop. Ten, twelve years. My brother. He and my mother work different directions because there's no road. You know, no snow. There's a lot of snow, no road. It's covering, covering. I don't know how long, but, you know, Hagop, he was the one who found me. And he opens his chest and he puts me on it and he warms me. And from then on, always, I'm very sensitive to, to the cold. They cannot support me. And that was in uh, 1895. That was the same year that Turks massacred 35,000 Armenians around at the home. And we flee to Kars. In Kars, the priest christened me. Jorgan. But I am child of massacre forever. But then, then when I was eight years old, I went back to Etzeron with my brother Jacob and my mother. You see, before the massacres, my father put some gold money, old documents, which proved that we owned the property in a box, in the ground, in a barn. My father he needed money for the family, but more important, the documents proving that our grandfather owned the property. So we returned to Etzelum. My mother, Hagop, and me. Hagop found the barn. It was dark inside, and he started digging behind the door. And he found the box about one and a half feet long. Takes it out from the dirt. Same time, barn door open. Two torques come in. One takes my brother's hands, the other takes his head and, and cut. Cut his throat, like they cut animals. I was crying, hidden in the dark, wanting to help him. My mother stopped me, put her fingers in my mouth, I cannot cry. Ten, fifteen feet away, the Turks, they are waiting, 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 and all the blood come out, and my brother, hug up with open eyes, is looking at me. My brother, he is also my mother. He found me, you see, frozen. He gave me life again. But my mother's body hid me and her fingers in my mouth. And I know that these fingers, I eat inside her fingers. Oh, oh, the raw meat. And first I think I imagine blood in my mouth. But it's not imagination. Oh. I drink the blood and eat the flesh of my mother when she silenced me with her fingers. After this, all her life, she has these two fingers deformed. There's no inside the flesh. All this, 
I don't, I don't want to tell more. I don't want to tell. All my years of life, I have never seen Jacob. In memory, yes, I see him, but never in vision, never. Till I saw him first in my apartment. Those days recently when I asked why, why, what I do now. Second time when I shoot, destroy those two in hotel. Last vision in hotel. When I saw blood like phantom come like this. Eyes open. I finished high school in Tiflis, and after I went to Moscow to study engineering, the Turks were taking more and more of Armenia, and I volunteered, joined a group of students to help the Armenian people, and not, not the army. No. The massacres had started again. We went from Moscow to Tiflis, then to Renikian, and then to Igadir, and finally, finally to Lake Van. Yeah. We saw lots of bodies spying in the river, floating. Heads, arms, legs, parts of bodies. We, we started to take them out, you know, to bury them, but there were too many. All Armenians we know from circumcision. I find the man's hand, women with their breasts cut off, limbs caught in tree roots, and at the river's edge, a purple band of froth, blood clinging to the banks. There were villages, churches, farms, all destroyed, burnt and blown up. There was no one left alive. And this was my country, my people, and we could not help. So we rode down to a car. There was a very, very old church near the river, and there were thousands of bodies there, thousands of them. And there were men, children, women, really to describe what I saw. Yes. Yeah. You, you can see body, no head. You can see body with open stomachs. You can see women, you know, all inside out. And you can see children, like, uh, cut in half, like a watermelon. I found my brother-in-law's son, Kashik, only 12 years old. And in the courtyard, his father's head. He had a big mole on his face. He could not find his body. What they did to the children. So, as I left, outside Van, people dead. I, I do not know how long they were nailed on crosses. Shoes nailed to their legs. I went near to them, and they were horseshoes. Well, I cannot stop bury all these people. Only a look. Burned bodies on crosses. And the world still knows nothing of this. It might never have happened. But you see, the past does not take care of itself. I know it does not take care of itself. It passes on the knowledge, good and bad, to the next generation. Now, I am old. I mean, I'm going to be dead soon, one way or the other. It's a long time ago. But, but until the truth is told, until it is known, the young will only know the bad knowledge of the past. Hey, look, 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 look at this. Huh? I was, I was sent this. Not long ago, this letter. Who is it from? Hmm? I tell you who it's from. Orfan Karagatim of the Turkish Students Association in New York. This is his response to an article I wrote about incidents in Turkish history. This letter, like a knife in my heart, and not only my heart, in the heart of all mankind. This is a dirty letter. Hmm? He says, you spread poison everywhere. For the sake of your ulterior motives, you inoculate children with poison. You say that the Turks massacred you. You commit errors taller than your height. Who are you competing with? With your endless digging and dangerous meetings, you become the laughing stock of the entire world. Brainless jackass. Yeah. Now, of all the races in the world, the Turks of noble reputation, relying on the power of the gun, is waiting to slay a few million goddamn Armenians. Goddamn Armenians, for once and all, we are going to wipe you from the face of the earth. For the love of Muhammad, if you kill one Armenian, you will qualify for heaven. With the help of Allah, we will turn Armenia into a graveyard. 60,000 Armenians in Istanbul are slaves in our hands. Sheep to be slaughtered. As for your spiritual leaders, 
We will split their guts in the street. Let the world be spectators. This is your true faith. Do not depend on the Russian bear or on Kotham. Only we can bring your true faith. And only you know very well the sharp cutting edge of the Turkish sword. When you commemorate your martyrs, you can add this document as an announcement to the world. This is written by Orphan Karagizim, Turkish Student Association of New York. Of New York! What is the future? If these are the next generation, if the old cannot tell the young the truth, who will? And if the young will not believe the truth, Yes, that is mine. And this, this is mine also. I bought it in Beverly Hills years ago. It's never used until today. I bought the Browning because I feared that the 26 years of Luger might not work. It worked. You see, I had to decide, I had to decide what to do. Kagob helped me after all. I, I am old, but I had to do something with my life. I mean, I tried, I failed, betrayed, made second-class citizen. But what I had built for 25 years, going down, my, my work, my life was, was meaningless. I had to do something. My idea was killed. So what do I do, kill myself? No, 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 no. I mean, I was, I was still free. I had no children, no family. Well, my wife was... Fifteen years has been sick in rest home in Santa Barbara. And before that, I nurse her. She's called Shushanik. I mean, Suzanne. Oh, she doesn't know me. Oh, she hasn't known me for a oh, long time. You know, that's kind of upsetting after 49 years. So, I made the last visit to her. She, she doesn't know. I leave her 50, 60 chocolate bars, and I ask the nurse to give her from me. Then I come home, and I start to plan. Contact Turkish consulate. Say I have a valuable banknote for their archives. And picture looted from Palace of Sultan Abdul Hamid. I want to return them. So, make arrangements for them to meet me. I book a cottage room for me at Santa Barbara Biltmore Hotel. Move there with my documents and my briefcase and a few clothes. And I kept thinking, quickly, 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 I must not get sick. Too sick to finish what I started. They want to come on the 20th, but that's Nixon's inauguration day, American holiday. I don't want to spoil that, so no, no, I said, no. They want to bring their wives and children. I tell them, no, no, no. So they agreed to come on 27th, today. Turkish Consul General... Mr. Damir, and the man who drives him. They come to my room, carriage three. Yeah, I welcome them. They think that I am your Yaniki, an Iranian. Why, well, I deceive them. And when I tell them, I am Rogan Yanikian, an Armenian, ah, oh, they change. Now, they were, they were nice people. They were very nice people. But what they stood for, their, their government, what they did to us. So they offered me decorations, $5,000 cash, if I never again went against the Turkish government. Never ever write. Yeah, my Armenian poetry is very strong. Well, I try to find an excuse in my brain, you know, to, to postpone what is going on. But the past, I have no moral right to kill my idea. The people will know, the world. I, I had been crying all the night. Peace. Oh, peace, dear brother. Peace. I know, I know, I promise. And I will keep my promise. I will finish what I started. I will finish. When I, when I told the consul that I was from Armenia, that I was an Armenian, the money falls from his hand onto the floor. 
I told him I am Armenian. I write many articles against your nation, against what you did in the past. Not you, or maybe your father, maybe your grandfather, I don't know. But your nation, but you, you, you young generation, you never, ever tried to find out. He, he said to me, he said, hey, take this $5,000, but promise never to write against us ever again, against our nation. Now we are friends. I saw the face of my brother, Jacob. Same blue eyes separating from the face. And I told him, despite the fact you put us to death, Despite the fact you receive hundreds and hundreds of millions from us, from the civilized world, from America, despite the fact that all your nation is dirt, and you have your republic, you stay the same savages you were 100 years ago. Then he called me, he said, you, you son of a bitch, Armenian, and he picked up the chair to eat me, and I jump, and I open the book. No, no, I will destroy you. I don't know what I said. I destroyed two evils. I put a light in the darkness. I kill nobody. Two symbols. To destroy one human being, I should use one bullet. But I shoot two bullets in each head. Why? Why I did this? Eh? I don't want them to suffer. Yes, they did a job for their nation. Now they do job for mankind. I don't want they should suffer more. Uh, one body is here, one body is there. I, I go to the telephone and, and I put my hand on the wall. Because I saw a picture. Picture of my brother. I touch, I touch him. I think I saw. There's nobody there. I telephone the sheriff. And I wait. Two lights in the darkness. I've used the lives of only two Turks to rouse the conscience of the world. If killing two Turks is illegal, is killing what? The two million legal? The difference? I do not deny what I have done. I seek justice. I would rather die having spoken after my manner, then speak in your manner and live. You are not Yannickian's words. Words of Socrates. Yeah. I would rather die. <laughs>